hi, I'm Lo. Here's the timestamp for those of you who fear human connection and can't bear to listen to me talk for like 90 seconds. The least you can do is subscribe. Hi to the rest of you. That was very aggressive for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> hi, I'm Lo. This is a sketchbook tour of this sketchbook. This is a Moleskine watercolor sketchbook. So it has, wait, I've written this down. 72 pages, 200 GSM, cold press paper. I am always on the hunt for my perfect sketchbook. This is not it, all right? Let me tell you. So, at least I've learned that. This is not for me. I think if this would have been hot press watercolor paper, we might have had a winner, but it's not. So, alas. The hunt continues. Also, the irony of me posting a sketchbook tour after my last video, not lost on me, don't worry. I I see it. And after reading some of the comments, I feel like I need to make um, a disclaimer of sorts. What I do in here is not what a lot of other people do in their sketchbooks. So if you're here and you're gonna look at this and feel like that's not what my sketchbook looks like, that's fine. Some people would call my sketchbook an art book. I call it my sketchbook because this is my primary working place for all of my art. Someone even left a comment in my last video saying that people who do sketchbooks like this, this might be something seriously wrong with them. <laughs> so there might be something seriously wrong with me. Okay, thank you. Let's get into what everyone's actually here for. Let's get into it. I started this sketchbook September 2nd and finished it the 21st of February, so it took me a solid five, almost six months to complete. A large part of it is from October. If you'd like an in-depth talk through of all the art I made for the October Art Challenge I made for myself, I've made a video. Have at it. So, first page. It is a jelly gouache painting of a disco ball. I've had my Himi Jelly Gouache for a really long time and I really set out to use it more in this sketchbook. I received it for Christmas years ago from my parents and it is, I've barely made a dent into it to be quite frank and it's embarrassing. More Jelly Gouache. These rats are some of my favourite in the entire sketchbook which it's great to start off with something good uh, but there's a long way down when you start off with something good. And I felt fast because this is one of my least favorite things I think I've ever created in my entire life. Swiftly, I moved over to acrylic paint. I prefer the street scene. I genuinely like this painting so much, especially the colors. And the portrait on the left is something that looks fine at first. If you look at it for too long, uh, you know, she can smell fear. So don't keep, don't keep eye contact. I decided to try pencils, which is when I realized that the cold press paper is going to fight me. The texture doesn't lend itself to smooth layers of color uh, when it comes to pencil. And the finished versions look a lot better because digital art is magic. You might recognize this little ghost suit as my channel banner. He is also the star of his very own YouTube video. Have fun. And all of these paintings were also done in jelly gouache. Now, I know I said I wasn't a fan of how pencils looked in this sketchbook, but I don't hate this. The dogs are very dark uh, because I had to layer a lot to get them that dark, but I kind of like it. These are just ballpoint pen drawings, and since I have way too many different random pins and markers lying around, I like to use them to fill in backgrounds, both as a way to actually use and hopefully finish some of my supplies, but also to make the pages more interesting. This is genuinely just a random collection of photos I found on Pinterest. I wanted to fill a page with drawings that didn't necessarily have anything to do with each other legitimately just wanted to draw with a black and red pen once again though the paper fought me because getting very like straight and even lines with fine liners on this type of paper was hell i'm sorry that i just blew straight into your ear i could redo it i legitimately could probably should as well but i'm not going to so subscribe so that i can afford a proper microphone so that I don't have to use my phone <laughs> to record voiceovers. Uh, so I decided to do it again. 
The last two pages were a break from October, and then now it's straight back into it. Both of these are just fine liners. It's funny how much you can remember because most of the techniques I use with fine liners now are things I started doing during October in 2020. And they've stuck around, even though I don't particularly use the medium that much. The frog on the left really gave me the ability to test the paper because I loaded that bitch up with water. Call me Niagara Falls. Don't call me Niagara Falls. I don't know. I don't know where that came from, to be quite honest. It backfired because you can tell that there are several spots where there's bleeding. The portrait on the right is done in Tombow Marcus and water. If you watched my last sketchbook tour, you know how I'm a sucker for the mix of water-based markers and using a water brush to blend them out. Ah yes, the foil balloons that almost made me chuck something at the wall. <laughs> When I look at these balloons, it puts me into like a visceral stage of rage that I didn't know I was able to put myself into. I... <sighs> like, even though like when I look at them now, they're not the worst. The brown really mutters the entire thing and makes it look bad. But I just remember the feelings I had when I was painting this. The frustration and just unbridled rage. Luckily... The two other paintings are fine, so the entire spread's not a bust. I should have probably gone with a thicker line for the page on the left. I don't like the way it looks, because it looks... Sc scrangly. <laughs> it looks scrangly. And the fact that the ink on the right is so warm and doesn't match the other black around it is very annoying um and i don't like the way i executed the design so it is something i need to revisit because i like the idea of the scorpion in the shape the execution is just very lacking uh okay quickly in the comments tell me which hand is your favorite these are mine and obviously because i drew this with alcohol markers you have to deal with the alcohol marker bleed through pro tip is posca markers i think we've all done it a couple of times on the can there are cherries but they just look like evenly spaced red dots because the value of the blue red and green are the exact same if i turn on a black and white filter no difference the shoe is just kind of boring. I could have done some black line art or something, but I really wanted to work with shapes and not rely on the line art for this one. I have a tendency to rely on my line art a bit too much, so I had to push myself a bit out of that comfort zone. Didn't necessarily like the way it turned out, but at least I've tried it. I don't know how YouTube's going to feel about this one. I absolutely hate studying anatomy, but every now and then I feel bad because I know it's something I should focus more on. Uh, so this is a lackluster attempt at timed anatomy drawings. Ta-da! Oh, hi, K-pop fan art. This drawing was so painful because I underestimated the amount of work I would need to put in to draw the frame from the music video. It is... The sketchbook itself is like an A5 size, which is fine for certain kind of drawings, but like, no. Detailed scenes. And if you've seen the original photo, like the original reference photo, that is detailed, okay? And it's also kind of... And like, I know I wanted to do it in like black and white pencil because I love just drawing with pencils. But it loses so much of its charm when it's black and white, you know? It's... It's... It would have been better if I did it in colors, but I didn't. Portraits on my comfort zone. This is Hoshi from 17. Then again, this is also Hoshi from 17. You just can't really tell because it's, you know, more of the, more of the concept of a person than it is an actual person. And this is a skeleton with wings. 
and also a blank page, which is an indicator that I was starting to get lazy. I wanted nothing more than this sketchbook to be over at this point. Okay, so I didn't learn my lesson from the frog and I decided to make the painting wetter. This was an absolute nightmare and I didn't even make a painting I liked. Zero out of 10. This, however, magnum opus, 10 out of 10. Spread is therefore an average five out of 10. As you can tell over here, I switched pencil halfway through because I ran out of lead about halfway through. I did a trick that I learned from Emily Hughes where she smudges her pencil drawings with a tissue between the different stages. And I do think it would have probably been better to have done it with the colored pencils. But then again, you know, me, you can... You can try to rip my regular pencils out of my dead cold hands, all right? You're not going to get them. You're not going to take them from me. This spread came about from the poem first. Who's the writer of the poem? You ask me. I'm insufferable. There's also a video process of this if you'd like to take a peek. It is done in my cheap children's watercolour. And to be quite frank with you, the kid's watercolor slaps. The only other thing that I worked with was the golden sun around the ice, which is a gel pen. Oh yes, a new and desperate attempt at using jelly gouache. I, I just wanted to do a green and red color combo. I feel like on the right, you can clearly see what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the texture of the paper, because it's almost got like a leather pattern. Oh, this is kind of embarrassing because I've been meaning to make this into a digital thing and post it on Instagram for months. You were supposed to see this about two months ago, but alas, here we are. It's a small comic. It's just regular old pencil, but I struggled with the house one. Not because of the house, but the water and the sky and the road. I was just not sure how to shade it. And now that I'm looking at it, the ground should definitely be darker than the sky. <laughs> And here is where I really just gave up. The drawing on the right isn't even finished. It started out as me trying to plan out some Christmas presents for my friends. I went with the tulips in space. I painted three different versions of it. I actually ended up liking the end product so much that I've made prints of them that are available in my shop. The drawing on the right was an idea that I realized would not be doable at the scale that it was. I was not going to be able to push that many details into such a small drawing and still make it work, so I abandoned it. I do think if it was either digital or at maybe an A4 scale or bigger, it might have been a different story. Oh yeah, bike seat head looking ass. Borzois are so stupid and I love them. They look like those medieval drawings of animals where artists clearly weren't entirely sure what they were drawing. I used colored pencils for this and focused on the values more than the color to get the dogs to look like dogs as much as borsos can look like dogs. This is me as a baby. When I was cleaning out my mum's apartment last year, I came upon a huge amount of pictures of me as a baby. And it was a weird feeling because I had just kind of accepted the fact that I would have no traces or images of myself as a child for the rest of my life. So when I found the photos, I was over the moon. It, it felt like my childhood was being given back to me. And my favorite part is that I learned that my one singular dimple has been present since I was tiny. If you look properly at the jacket over here, you can actually see that I messed up the proportions horribly the first time uh, because I drew all of this without a sketch first. I just went straight in with pen. I also went down a Emily Dickinson rabbit hole and decided to put a full-on poem in the blank spaces. This is possibly my least favorite spread from this entire sketchbook. It's a mix of no planning, just vibes, and a bad selection of colored pencils. I drew this in a cafe at the Nitya Museum, and though getting out to draw was a good 
experience. I think looking back at it now, what would have been a better thing for me would have been to sit down and collect my thoughts and inspiration at home and take my time to really make something that works. Okay, so technically, chronologically, this is the last page I did in the sketchbook and I'm glad I was able to end it on a good note. I think one thing I got a lot better at in this sketchbook is using colors I don't necessarily would have used before. I have learned that I am a huge fan of using green as shadow. And then this is so silly. It's a stupid tiger. If you couldn't tell, I normally prefer to stick to mediums where I would work with layers and I lean more towards realism. So drawing a rectangular tiger is so far out of my realm as it gets. And this is the end. Not to the world, but to the sketchbook. I said fuck it and decided to skip the last few pages. I had a new sketchbook with paper that lent itself much more to my preferences. And I just wanted this to be done. So, goodbye sketchbook number nine. Welcome back. Wasn't that great? Thank you for joining me. Hopefully you will decide to subscribe so that you can join me further into the, you know, next videos as well. It has been a pleasure having you. Uh, my name's Lo. Follow me on other social media and I will see you again. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.